Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Before jumping into the presentation, I would like to say a big thank you to Christian for recommending the channel on Twitter, but also for the advice you wrote in the comments. So big thank you for that. Uh, welcome everyone and thanks for subscribing, but also thank you for the comments. It was impressive to read your feedback and yeah, no pressure on me at all now. Here's what next presentation is about. So pre-market, post-market, episodic pivot, five minute chart analysis. Here are the open questions covered later. How many news catalysts were announced in post-market the day before and how many in pre-market? How the stock behaves in after hours when a favorable news catalyst is announced? Is the stock having a visible price action in after hours? What is the most common price action at the open? Is it open range breakout or breakdown? What's the volume pattern in the five minute time frame on EP day? And the last one, where can I get edge when trading EPs? Before looking into those questions, I would like to share a bit of information on the data that was used in this study. Initially, I looked into the like episodic pivot was identified, then the catalyst was added, then a side by side comparison was Pi and IVM to look into the correlation. And the last um, layer of data is the five minutes chart using historical data from eSignal. It was a very useful resource to use for this particular intraday analysis. I have no marketing affiliation with this software uh, at the moment when I record the video. Here, uh, like initially the EPs were classified based on pattern, a total of 1,018 EPs were identified from September 2016 to September 2022, then they were arranged chronologically, then the, those EPs that happened on 9th of November 2020 were removed because this is when um, the Pfizer and BioNTech data on uh, COVID trial results were announced. Um, and then some EPs were not available in eSignal, some like some tickers, like it was five or six tickers. So those were removed as well. And then the time frame of data was changed to January 2017 to September 2022. So for this particular study, I ended up having 861 episodic pivots. What you see right away when you look into the after hours data is that the pre-market and post-market trading activity vary significantly from stock to stock. To recognize in what type of after hours market you are in is a skill. On this slide, what you see on the left is a gray band and that's actually all the after hours activity that is present in some stocks, so almost none. And it was unexpected for me to find this, but yeah, this is what they have. And then here and there, more erratic volume on some stock. And of course, more price action, a more significant volume and uh, a more defined trading activity on some stocks. So um, a remark here is that all the stock you see now on the screen, the after hours is for stocks that had the catalyst in post market. And yeah, studying those the after hours, what I observed is that some stocks have a small number of transaction in after hours and some in after hours benefit from a high demand and can even create patterns. Having the five minutes data for aftermarkets, of course, the first question I looked into was how many news catalysts were announced in post-market the day before and how many in pre-markets? What's the space I should uh, be in and where it's kind of more worth it to be? Well, the data was surprisingly balanced. 452 in post market and 409 in the pre market However, there is a small catch to this data and I'll get to it in a bit. How the stock behaves in after hours when a favorable news catalyst is announced? Well, what happens is that there is always a significant price jump within a very short period of time. This behavior is, you can see at 99.9% of all the uh, stocks that were in the study. So a significant, uh, very sharp price up in a very short period of time. 
what you see here on the uh, on the screen is the chart of Netflix, and you see that price action and significant jump in after hours. Um, so that's typical and classic for the after hours uh, of EPs. Just before going to the next slide, I would like to also share a bit of details on the e-signal chart so that you can read it easier together with me. So what you can see on the top left is the ticker and the time frame, and the same data could be seen on the center of the chart. Then you see the gray area, which is the after hours um, um, market and then on the bottom here you see a date a number which is actually the date when the um, EP happened so um, on the left obviously is the post market and then on the right you see also based on hours it's the pre-market the next day also you can see the date of the EP the full date of the EP so that's useful also in case you want to track it as well and then the last thing you see on the chart some uh, levels uh, that I added as considered important levels of support or resistance and uh, the number is actually the price of the stock at that level. Let's go. So after the jump, most of the stocks trade around the newly established after hour price level. This is a behavior that I saw also um, pretty often. So here are a couple of examples. In this case, Lulu uh, ha announces in post market you see the jump and then a newly established level and after that in after hours that it just trades around that level here is an example when the news comes in pre-market again you see the jump and then uh, trading around the newly established level however there is a small number of cases wherein after the jump the stock continues to go up step by step it's visible and I was curious to see how often this happens. And here it is, 9% of the cases, um, there was a visible step-by-step -step action in post-market and 118 EPs from post-market and 102 EPs from pre-market has a step-by-step -step price action in pre-market. So 25% of the total EPs in the study show the pre-market step-by-step upward move, which makes it clear that it's more worth it to be in pre-market and early in pre-market than in post-market the day before. And I was happy to see this data because that will actually mean I don't need to stay in post-market when it comes to EP. I can have a good sleep because the um, post market for Europe is coming at 10 p.m. So I was feeling a bit lazy and irresponsible that I don't stay in the evening and watch what EPs there and what earning calls are announced. But now the data is saying it's good to go to sleep. Yeah, next, here, here are a couple of examples. So post market step-by-step -step action so that you see what I mean. Here is an example, a very interesting example, Nike having uh, that jump uh, from 133 to 139 and then the step-by-step -step action and to 150 in after hours and if you see the daily chart it didn't do much in the day so all the edge was in after hours another example when a pre-market step-by-step action is visible Another thing that I could see when studying the after hours is that if the pre-market is way too active and overextended in after hours, there is a high risk of getting overthrown at the open. So that's again a small thing that you could see when looking through the charts. That's why I highly advise you to look through them as well. And it comes again to this idea that to recognize in what type of after hours market you are in is a skill. And if you want to trade the EPs, even if you don't enter in after hours, I think it's a good idea to have a look through a couple of after hours timeframes to understand the price action that could be present there. Here's the next question I looked into. Is the stock having a visible, in this case, meaning significant price action in after hours? I looked into that because while reviewing the charts, there were stocks that were showing no visible 
tradable activity in after hours. However, they were still showing significant, relevant, high volume at the open. And I wanted to better understand how um, often this is the case. So I split them into visible and invisible. And here are the results. 60% were actually what I call visible and here are a couple of examples. Even at a lower traded volume, the chart is readable, the price action is um, easy to understand and see, so I call those visible. And here it is 40%, surprisingly high for me, I didn't expect to be so many, where the stock is having almost no readable price activity, so it's very hard to understand what's the interest in after hours for that particular stock even following the earning call and uh, they still show a relevant volume at the open. So yeah, some, an interesting insight that will be useful a bit later when we also discuss the volume at the open. Next question, what is the most common price action at the open? Is it open range breakout or breakdown? And here are the results. 57, in 57% of the cases, it's actually an open range breakout. The stock moves higher. And 43%, it's a breakdown. This is actually something that I perceived as a good news. That means that in 57% of the cases, right after the open, the stock will continue step by step and have the energy to move upwards. This, this can be used as a significant trading edge because that will mean um, the stock will gain a percentage in a short period of time. Um, that's good to have. And then this can also serve as a buffer later. Um, so that's also nice. I also looked into um, if there is any pattern between chickens, ducks and swan at the open uh, in terms of open range breakout or breakdown. And here's the conclusion. Neither chickens, ducks nor swan show a significantly different behavior at the open in the EP day. Here are a couple of examples of break open range breakouts, but also there will be some breakdowns. So um, catalyst announced in post market, there is a significant jump, then newly established traded level, and then open range breakout, very nice one with significant traded volume at the open, pay attention to that. Next one, catalyst announcement in pre-markets, newly established trading level, open range breakout, a much sharper um, trading activity and um, yeah, significant volume at the open. Then an example of a breakdown, pre-market catalyst announcement, step-by-step -step move upwards. There was an overextended market activity uh, in after in pre-markets um, with breakdown so and significant volume at the open but also later in the day this is actually a uh, stock with a very interesting nice rich traded volume so yeah breakdown examples another breakdown example uh, situation with significant uh, traded volume at the open Overall, 57% open range breakouts. We'll get to those in a bit, but that's a very good news. And 43% uh, breakdowns. Um, here's the next question. What's the volume pattern in the five minute time frame on EP day? To study this, I started from Christian's description on his webpage related to the volume in episode pivots. It's a very accurate description and it describes to the point what is happening in terms of volume. That's why I highly advise you to pause and read the description in details. I'll go ahead though and we'll take as an example Yelp. When looking at the volume, what you see right away, uh, away is that heavy volume out of the gate then within the first half an hour there is a significant traded volume equivalent to an average um, volume a traded day then when you compare the volume with the other two days here on the chart after the ep it's still visible how more significant and the rich volume across the day higher volume was in the ep day so looking at these elements, I tried to see in the rest of 861 EPs 
if this volume pattern is applicable and here are the results significant volume at the open and rich volume on the five minute candles during the ep day was present in 54 percent of the cases and then more erratic and consistent or fading later in the ep day 46 percent here are a couple of examples here's like erratic volume fading later in the day this is what i highlighted when you see look closely on the five minute chart you see that there is significantly lower activity on some five minutes bars and then there is also a weaker volume and fading significantly in the second part of the day uh, let's compare it with some situation when the volume is rich and major volume across the day so what you'll see right away is at the opening that massive volume right out of the gate um, consistent rich not fading so much uh, during the day and then if you look closely also at the, before the market close it's also happening and higher increase in volume that's why um, it kind of looked for me like a boat or a canoe and then I tried to look through those EPs and find that canoe for myself and see how this develops while the day passes and the trading uh, trading happens so yeah paying attention to the volume evaluating the volume on the chart uh, looking how it builds itself through the day it's a very important diagnosing element when it comes to episodic pivots and the success of an episodic pivot later in the day. Highly advise to pay attention to this. Now that there are more and more details from after hours and intraday charts related to the episodic pivot, I'll give it a try and give an overview of the setup taking into consideration all the elements we discussed so far and in the previous videos related to the deep dive on episodic pivots so here it is in more than 80 percent of the cases an episode ha pivot happened following an earning call the earning calls are announced in post-market and in pre-market most of the cases and it happens in a pretty good distribution 53 percent of catalysts are in post-market 47 in pre-market then um, in both cases there is a price significant price jump after the catalyst is announced and in post-market there is a nine percent step-by-step move upwards and then in pre-market when the catalyst is announced there there is also significant uh, price jump and then 25 percent out of the total um, move step by step upwards then what i should expect is 60 percent of them to be visible and 40 percent not showing a significant traded vo uh, vo um, volume and action during after hours and from there at the open 57 percent of them will have an open range breakout and 43 percent will go the down a breakdown in the first half an hour of trading and from there uh, for from day four or five the stock will go within one of the categories it will go 20 in mean, 27.4 percent of the cases uh, will have a steady move up in by far most of the cases 57.9 a sideway move and in 14.7 percent of the cases it will be a sharp change of direction this is all happening due to the market context that is um putting more and more presence and influencing uh, the uh, dynamics of the episodic pivots so there is that blend between the um, catalyst and the markets that results in these three main categories so yeah a nice overview to me and highlighting some important milestones of the episodic pivot setup and gives an even better understanding of the setup itself the data on the episodic pivots the catalyst the correlation and now with an intraday five minute chart is available for download in, on the link in the description highly advised to look into it if you would like to trade the ep there's a lot of interesting stuff to also learn about after hours the visible invisible to check the volume to confirm for yourself the open range breakouts and 
breakdowns. So overall, totally worth it. Couple of questions to go. So where can I get edge when trading EPs? When I started the episode pivot deep dive, what caught my attention were those stocks that do a steady move up. It was applicable for 27.4% of the EPs. And at that time I was saying the name of the game when trading EPs is to find swans. And my approach was actually a more fundamental one where I was trying to search for good quality catalyst that is more likely to create a significant move upwards. So finding and trading the swans. However, there is, was another set of data that was showing that in 83% of EPs will have their highest profit day within the first 10 days. And for 62% of EPs, it is best to take profit within the first five days of the EP. So yeah, trading more on the shorter time frame. And then when I did the episode pivot map, there was a proof that there is a lower number of EPs during market correction. So there is a significant correlation with the market for this setup. And looking at the catalyst, it was showing that the EP is uh, having a catalyst that is not that strong, which is present and influencing significantly in the first four days of the EP, but then the market goes in a very, and the EP goes in a significant correlation with the market. So there was this confusion a bit and blur on how do I get edge when trading the setup and should I go more on a shorter time frame or on a longer time frame? Well, what the um, study on intraday and after hours data showed was another very important element of the episodic pivot setup, which is the open range breakout. In 57% of the cases, um, the stock from the moment, from the open in the EP day will do this open range breakout uh, within a half an hour like within a short period of time in a lot of cases within half an hour but usually within a short period of time and then that means that if i get and enter the ep within this open range breakout and having that volume confirmation at the open it can help to have and gain a very comfortable position in either strategy I will decide to go for, will it be a shorter one, two, three days time frame, or um, uh, to keep it for a longer period with the hope that it's a uh, swan. So this study on uh, intraday and five minute charts showed this open range breakout, which is a significant edge actually. Uh, let me show a couple of examples. So in that orange square is where is the best spot to entry. Uh, here's another example. Pay attention to also to the volume at the entry. What a significant um, entry volume and a nice open range breakout. Here another example of a very comfortable position to be in if you manage to get an entry at that level, pay attention to the volume as well. Another example of a nice open range breakouts, another open range breakouts. So in a sense, a significant edge is happening in the EP day at the market open when I should try to throw my uh, position and take a position within that uh, open range breakouts which will put me in a very comfortable um, situation for later. Um, I try to look into those in terms of numbers and performance of all open range breakouts. Here are the calculations and I will advise you to pause and look through the, these numbers in more details. If I'll have to summarize then, where's the edge uh, when it comes to EPs? Uh, definitely entry price level and trying to be at the open price range is an edge. If you can get that, it's important. The quality, the catalyst quality is also very relevant to pay attention to that and try to see the, those that have significant profits, earning per shares and to good uh, earning performance of the company. 
and of course the market context which is very relevant way more relevant than expected watching the market understanding the trend will help you to see and uh, when to cut the position or is there a hope to stay more in the position because there is a good market trend so here is a bigger picture on where the edge is based on what i studied so far uh, we'll go back though to one of the questions that I also had highlighted during the catalyst study. So is it worth it 1080 earning calls per quarter to find 25, 27 EPs? When it comes to is it worth it, is it worth it in terms of effort and money wise? In terms of money wise, I cannot say yet, but in terms of effort, after this studying the behavior of the EP, in aftermarket and also intraday and also after getting a comment from Christian it's now way more clear on how to identify the setup here's what Christian says you're over complicating finding EPs though even during the heat of the earnings season it's very easy to find them scan for stocks gapping up to 8-10% and check the catalysts on those keep the scanner going after the open since many smaller names may tra not trade pre-market that's it no need to read through 100s of earnings release and press releases so thank you Christian and yes the significant jump in after hours make the EP easy to identify so with the right scanners in terms of effort this is not so much effort and then the goal is to try to see what it does a bit in after hours is that step by step element happening and then being fully prepared and having the skill to enter the position at the open range breakouts if that's the case because it's not always the case but it's the case looks like in the majority of situations so this is where you get that significant edge for later um, and before wrapping up, up, if I may advise, study data more than once. The brain forgets information way faster than we would like to. Think for yourself, challenge what you hear, confirm it with data and debate with other traders. Don't believe me fully because I also study it while I go and share information while I study. So uh, don't fully believe what you hear in these slides and then do your fair share of work to internalize knowledge. Search examples of visible, invisible after our markets on your charts. Find that can you identify catalyst. The market will beat you up if you are not prepared. So ju don't just watch the videos, but try to also uh, watch these slides and make some examples of exercises for yourself and do your fair share of work. Here's where i am in terms of setup implementation so far so there are a couple of steps that i highlighted for myself when implementing the setup and here where here are the steps and you'll see where i am study available knowledge and review historical charts and then i said i'll try to develop process and learn tools next one will be to um, um, market testing and quick adjustments in iteration with small position size and the last one will be set up active trading and performance tracking so as of now until recently both the episode pivot and breakouts were in the research phase now episode pivots is studied well enough to move to the next stage so i'll work on developing process and learn tools Let's see how that goes. And then the breakout setup is still in the research phase. I will still have to study the intraday charts for the breakouts one. Uh, that's the next video coming soon. So if you like the information on in this video, please don't forget to give it a like, subscribe so that you don't miss the next video. Thanks a million for your comments, feedback, for your support, subscribing to the channel. Wish you a great day. Peace.